strap yourself in, guys, because this one is going to suck. So I've covered how to compile my programs for Mac, which I do while I'm actually making the tutorial videos. And I just did one for Linux, and uh, I just know that it's going to come up for Windows. So um, I'm going to show you how to do it on Windows. And uh, I have prepared almost nothing for this video with the exception of installing Visual C++. Um, I'm running this on 2005, but uh, I've done this on 2013 as well. And uh, from what I can tell, um, there's really no difference. Uh, if there is one that I can think of, maybe I'll bring it up. Um, so I'm on Windows 7 here. And what I'm going to go ahead and do here is I got my control folder right here. And I'm going to extract it onto my desktop. And this has the source code in there. And I'm just going to get rid of some things I know right away that I don't need. And basically I have my C file and that's what I'm going to try to compile. So let me get rid of the zip. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a brand new project from scratch in Visual C++. And we're going to create a Win32 app. And um, I guess we're creating a console application because I don't see one for a non-console application. Empty project is just asking for trouble. So I'm going to call this Contro VC. So now I'm going to walk through this stupid wizard. It's going to ask me some questions. Uh, I don't want a pre-compiled header because I know in Windows that can be a little bit of a problem. So I'm going to uncheck that. I'm going to go to finish. And basically we have a console application. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and just see what we get off the bat. So basically we get a console window to pop up and that's the end of that story. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is I'm going to basically, I know that there's some things we're going to need, but maybe I should put the source code in first. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Contro, and I'm basically going to copy all this junk into my project folder, open containing folder, and I'm just going to paste all this junk into right here, and uh, that should be enough to get us started. Now usually I don't like to just straight up delete the uh, the main, but um, I'm feeling confident, so I'm going to get rid of the main that came with the dumb thing, out of the project at least, and I'm going to drag Contro in. But before I do that, it's really important. Even though this is C code, Visual C++ is a terrible C compiler. Uh, its C++ standards are sort of up to par, especially in the newer versions like Visual C++ 2013 uh, and stuff, but the C compiler is running off of an ancient C standard and a lot of modernisms in C that I utilize in my videos won't work and it's just worth it at this point to um, utilize a trick which is basically to change the file extension from C to C++. Use DOS. Alright, so I'm going to right click, I'm going to add existing item, and I'm going to bring in the C++ file for Contro. So if I double click this and just take a look inside of it, basically this is the same source code that we've been using in all the other videos. Now you're going to notice right away if I go to build this, it's going to say that it can't find STL.h and that's because we basically have to go get STL um, in, a, in a version that can be compiled for Windows. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Chrome here, and I'm basically going to do a Google search for SDL2. And when it comes to using SDL for Visual Studio, um, compiling it manually is usually a giant pain in the ass. So usually what I like to do is try to find pre-built binaries. So I'm just going to go directly to the libSDL website and see if I can just find these. I'm pretty sure that they're available. Yep, Windows binaries. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, I'm not sure if I'm running on a 64-bit machine or not, so bear with me while I check that. This is a 64-bit version. So I'm going to grab the 64-bit version of the Windows binary. I also know that I'm going to need, um, at least for this project, SDL image. 
I'm going to go grab the Windows binary for that. And let me show you guys how to put this in a place where it's utilizable. There's also one called SDL2 development, and uh, we need to get the development libraries. That's really important. And we need to get the development libraries for the original SDL as well, which are down here. Now, I'm pretty sure I have already downloaded them on here. I just kind of see them. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pick out of what I have here. But basically, um, yeah, once you have these, it's important to put them in the right place. So I'm going back to my project folder, and I'm just going to make something here, a folder basically called, oh, I don't know, libs. It's kind of a bad name, because inside here I'm going to have a folder called include, and then I'm going to have another folder called lib. Going back to my downloads, I'm basically going to first find SDL, the development folder. Inside include, I'm going to copy everything inside here into my include folder. And then I'm going to go into lib, and I'm going to copy everything under x64 into lib. These are .lib files with the exception of that DLL there. And then I'm going to do the same thing for any other dependencies that I might have. And in this case, I'm pretty sure one of those that I need for this video is called SDL2 image. So um, these are all the uh, DLLs. I'm just going to copy this into lib. And then there's SDL to image development. There's lib inside here. I can skip anything that's already there. So there should be something in here called, yep, sdl2 image.lib. And then lastly, the include file sdl2 image, which goes in include. I told you guys this is going to be a giant pain in the ass. Right? Maybe now, like, if you didn't believe me before, you'll believe me now. All right, so we have all that crap, right? So I go back to Visual Studio. Now, I haven't told Visual Studio where to find these header files yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the project and go to Properties. And under C and C++, there's a little section, and I believe it's called General, yeah. And then there's additional include directories. There, th this might be available in some other spots. Um, usually I end up having to find this in multiple places, but I think this is an okay spot to put this. So I'm going to click here, there's a dot dot dot, and then I'm going to click the little folder, and I'm going to, I'm going to go find my include path, which is under libs include, and then I'm going to open. And that basically should add more modern versions of Visual Studio, like 2013, which I do recommend using if you can, um, will give a relative path in here, so it'll always be relative to the project, where here are kind of hard-coded the full path, which is kind of annoying. I was to move this project around but for the sake of example we got it so I'm gonna to go to build solution and we're gonna get some more errors um, this is a pretty shitty looking um, error window so um, but I think this version of Visual Studio only shows errors this way There's, the newer one will have a, a better itemized list of the errors so it says malloc isn't found um, in C malloc might be provided you know, almost like automatically without having to include it, but in C++ or maybe even Visual Studio, it's good to include. It might be malloc.h, it might be memory.h. Usually I don't have to go ahead and include this. All right, so malloc.h it was. Now we have another thing here. This is an error in assignment. Um, this basically says that, that, that we cannot convert from void to bullet star. This is a C++ error. Uh, in C, this is done automatically or implicitly converted. In C++, we have to basically manually cast this so because like I said we're compiling this in C++ now so keep going um, these are warnings fuck the warnings uh, render copy X um, this one I just know from experience because I've dealt with this before it says um, there's a problem with argument 7 SDL render flip is being converted to an integer um, implicitly 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 so this one's actually pretty simple I just basically do const stl render flip um, let me see if I spelled that right looks like I did I think I have to do this in more than one place but let me at least make sure this one error goes away you know what like don't show this again okay so let's see if we got rid of that first error it 
we didn't. So let's try to find out why this had a problem. I might have spelled that wrong. I might have. Yep, yeah, I did. So whatever I copied before is invalid. Let me just go ahead, throw this cast in here. So if I'm doing any of the render flip stuff, I have to be explicit because C++ is rather anal about that thing. All right, so we can see it actually got through the compilation stage and got the linking, and then it failed the link. A lot of people get stuck on this um, when they're learning C++ and C because linker errors are very cryptic. Um, long, long and short of it is we told it where to find the header files, which um, are the prototypes of the functions. In other words, you know, uh, it tells the, tells the compiler that the functions will be coming later, but the actual code for the functions is in the library files, which we have not provided yet. We've only provided the path to the header files via include. So what I basically have to do now is link or provide um, the libraries for all the SQL code and all of its dependencies, and this can be kind of tedious. But basically, I right-click the project, I go to the linker, I go to input, and I literally provide line by line every single um, dot lib that it needs. And uh, I also need to provide the path to these before I can do that. So um, I believe if I go to general and go to additional library directories just like I did for the includes, instead of pointing it to libs, or, uh, lib, I pointed to, um, or include, I pointed to lib. So there's the path to lib. Now I give it name by name all these freaking libraries. And on Windows, they have to be done in the right order, too. So that's even more fun. So let me give you the order for this. I know for a fact I need stl2.lib. So let me throw this in and see if I can get rid of some of those linker errors. I believe it did not get rid of those like it should have. So usually that means it couldn't find the thing. Just to double check, I know this is a .lib file. I know this is a mistake, but um, I'm going to keep I'm going to keep going with this. SDL2 main.lib is usually needed. And then uh, SDL2 image lib. Let's see what happens if I add some more of these in here. I told you guys this is not easy to do. And there's a reason why I usually don't use Windows when I'm doing my tutorials, because I get bogged down in this stuff. Oh! I'm almost certain it's because we're building a, um, we are building a 32-bit project here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to call an audible, and we're going to switch these libs out for the 32-bit version of them, um, which would make a hell of a lot more sense. So uh, luckily, I think I already have these here. So I'm just going to go back into here, here, lib, x86, replace everything in here with this. See, Visual Studio doesn't tell you that it's the wrong um, architecture. It'll just straight up pretend like it wasn't even there at all, um, which is kind of not good. So you kind of have to be, you know, critical thinking while you're doing this stuff. So, x64, 64-bit, 86 is just straight up 32-bit. Let's see what happens when I do this now. All right, so right now it basically says there's a con. Forget that conflict. That's a warning. Um, debugging information corrupt. Recompile module. I have no idea what that means. All right, damn it. <laughs> so we're in Windows 8 now, and we're running on Visual Studio Express 2013. And I've imported the same project from before. And now, because it's not too old, when I say build solution, it does go all the way through to build succeeded. So it does build it. Um, I could have just said that in the other video, but the reason why I wanted to keep going is we're not done, believe it or not. If I were to run this, it would immediately fail. 
um, and it would basically come up and say there's no STL2.dll. So basically there are multiple ways to handle this. Um, one of them is to create a build script which literally means I'd have to write a batch file to copy the DLL to the resulting build directory every single time and um, I always thought that was kind of too much work and it wasn't really worth it because it's a lot easier in my opinion to just go into the libs and go get the DLLs that I need myself and just copy them manually into where I know the executable is going to be anyway because in that case uh, when I distribute the final thing I can um, I can basically put the DLLs with it anyway because it, Windows needs DLLs to work so done that I'm going to double click it again and it's immediately going to fail and the reason why is it won't be able to find the assets now depending on whatever error message I put as a result of not being able to find the assets I believe what I do is just quit immediately when that happens um, I print F something and I return immediately for some reason the print F doesn't seem to be happening when I run this um, because Windows has problems um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the assets into the folder as well wherever those might be there they are so there's some ping files why don't I just sort this by type so we have ping we have ping files um, so I'll take those we also have I thought we had other stuff we might only need these ping files I don't think I do anything else in this game there's like no sounds or anything so I'm going to go into debug where the executable is and I put the ping files in there and then when I double click this there seems to be an issue here I think it's because I don't initialize man.dy in Windows the, uh, the penalty in Windows and Linux sometimes the penalty for not initializing something is severe where um, on Linux and, and Mac OS uh, a lot of times you'll get zero um, so that was generally my mistake um, so after what was that um, half hour of recorded time and, and about two hours of my own time I finally got this thing building and running on Windows um, I have nothing else to say so um, this is the end of this video